So to to do this, I need this page component component with two pages, and it will swipe between these two pages. And I, that's what what I want to do. Uh, to to refer how to do this, you, you can open the docs and see page components. But I'll can type it here, and you can follow me if you want. Page, it's new page components. The nice thing in the framer is like it has. Nice code suggests that you start typing a couple letters and then it suggests you and you press enter and it's really nice. Uh, you can see that it's now taking the full width of the page. And now I want to do screen height. Yeah, so when you are creating your layers or page components or scroll components and you want them to be with some size, for example, width or height, you can uh, just type them in pixels or if it's full screen size or full screen height, the framer has uh, like an object called screen from capital S. And if you want your layer, or a new page component to be and if you want to see what reads, you, you can actually refer to screen and you can basically see uh, what's there yeah so for example you don't you are working with the I don't know maybe responsive stuff right so you are on iPhone 6 and then want to try an iPhone 5 because you have your screen reads as a page component it will always take the full width because it can be different in different devices. Yeah, so now I'm previewing on iPhone 6 device. I can select different devices. If I, for example, develop for Android, I select Nexus here. And now it's 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 180. 180. Okay, so I created my page co components and then I'm, I want to add new pages. So I'll start with a page photo new page new, it's new layer actually and uh, you can see that there's like new layer here I can start presenting bits for this it's like now page bits uh, because uh, I have this page here and I can basically find find out the width of this page. One, one comment. So, uh, when we are defining our objects, layers, page components, and then we have some settings for them. So, because it's coffee script, it doesn't have like brackets or something, you need to work with indent. So, you see all our width and height uh, variables are like indented to the right. So, they, they are like, you know, one level below the object. So, if, uh, if you will lose this in indenting space, it will not work, so just be aware. Uh, also, there is a good command uh, in Framer Studio. If you click View, there is uh, Show Invisibles. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so if you click this, it's uh, Command Shift I, I guess. It will show you all those spaces and tabs, and you will see, like, you know, yeah. indentations. Yeah. And when you press tab, is it always three indentations? Yeah, so better to use tabs than spaces. It's usually four here. Yeah. yeah. But in different uh, languages, it's usually to do two or eight or four. Uh, so I'll give my layer background color. Uh, 28 AFA. It's the one that lay framework guys use mostly. But you can use any of colors, like... You memorize that. <laughs> yeah, I usually do memorize my colors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our first page. You can... Uh, no, actually, you can do anything with this, because it's just, just a layer. You, it's uh, a little layer you created. But in order to uh, make it pageable, you try to add super layer. Superlay is page content. So you can actually see now, so in this layer hierarchy we have page. This is our page component. It has content layer, which is like service layer for us to be able to like add pages to this. And now we added a new page to this. And uh, now we can basically 
drag it and it will return to our, its original position with some nice easing. Yeah. I, I just try to take the example before <coughs> and it's like I create something that magically creates an amazing easy for me. Yeah. Is that just like the default framework? Yeah, but yeah, but you, you can you can actually change it. You can customize the settings. So yeah. the the big advantage of using framework, you can customize all those, you know. Right. How much you can drag, what is the bounds, and so on. Sure. So, yeah. uh, so you have the defaults here. If you if you search for defaults in this docs section, you will find that you can uh, change default background color, default border radius, default animation curve. Yeah. You can change default animation time, and uh, that that's per, basically. Is that per file or is that uh, uh, this is per data? file actually. It's not like per all. ID. So yeah, so now we have this one page and basically we can add another page which is page video. Uh, so I can so just yeah, copy this press, one. Uh, sorry. Uh, this display, uh, page counter essentially tells that uh, page photo is below uh, content. Right? Yeah, so yeah, when you have your page assigned. component or scroll component it's like a you know wrapper, and inside it, it will always be like a uh, content layer, uh, which, which uh, this is automatically created for you. So you don't have to write any code to do this, like page scrolling. And uh, you can you can find how it works, like if you try to see the documentation for this. But uh, in this layer hierarchy, you can see that there is content layer, and you just add layers to. To this uh, content layer. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we have a uh, page and we started to write our second page layer, uh, which is page video. Uh, and I'll try to change the color for it so I see that it's there. So now we have two layers, and I, I want to add this layer to this page component. And I Write page, add page, and I write page video here, and it's it disappeared, and I can see that it's on the right. So you can see you can basically swipe between your pages now, and right now there is not this nice vertical motion here. We can disable it by adding the scroll vertical option to the page component which is false and now when you swipe between your pages it's nice and you don't have this vertical motion it's okay. just horizontal motion yeah a question okay um, so i can see that on the page photo you use super layer right yeah in order to create a, a child of that's uh, how you add the first page so always, All, always it's, it's only for the first page if you add any six, uh, subsequent pages you add this this add page method for page component yeah so if you want to add another page you just write new you create new layer yeah and then you uh, you press page add page and you uh, put this parameter, the layer name, to the add page method. I see, I see. So I wouldn't be able to add page, add page photo. I need to actually make page photo a uh, child first and then... Uh, so yeah, you create the first child this way and then if you, if you want to add any like other childs beside the first one, you just create the layer first. You don't, cool. you don't say super layer thing. And you you edit this add page, and you can add it to any side. Actually, you can add it to the left, to the right, to the top, or to the bottom. So, mm -hmm. so for example, if you want to add it to the left, you do it like this. So now, I'm sorry, I don't know why it's not working. Well, let's just. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Um, I switched scroll vertical to scroll horizontal just to see what would happen. And okay. it makes it so that I can't scroll either way. How come it's not that it would just flip 
up and down instead of uh, because down. like now you can I think it's if you if you add it down and then change it to scroll ver scroll you remove it like this so now you can scroll vertical right here so if you if you add your layer down it works now you see this uh -huh. and if I say you, scroll horizontal false yeah, uh, you, you, press, you, you press command slash. Command uh, slash is an easy way to comment, comment or uncomment. So select or, it. Yeah, select the text. You can talk between. Yeah. So now you scroll vertical. It's easy enough, but and it's not moving horizontally, so it's nice and clean. Uncomment the screen, uncomment this one, and I change it to the right again. Now we have this left and right things. Mm -hmm. Good enough? So mine says a reference error can't find variable layer and then it highlights the layer. So I know which one to look at, but I can't say anything wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't highlight the bit. So maybe it's because you, you have yeah, the layer and it's uh, lower. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. If you want to you change it to capital mm -hmm. L. Does it have to be? Yes, it has to be. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. So now you have it. Okay. So you need to choose to write this. Yeah. Thank you. Check page. Is everyone else good? Good enough? Good enough? Okay, now what we have here, we have this page selectors. The small two dots mm -hmm. will try to create those ones. Yeah, sure. You can try. We'll try with creating a new layer. Circle A. It's a new layer. Uh, you can see it in the upper corner. So, we add the width, it's, it's around 35. It's 35 as well. Uh, the background color is white. So, you. So, it's white now. Uh, and uh, now we can center center layer. If we, if we write center, minute, so it's now centered on the screen. Is there a reason that's not indented in? Ah, with, um... uh, because like uh, this is actually this is the way you create a layer, and this oh, is okay. the operation of this layer. It's on different scope. Of the properties of the layer yeah, so this is uh, so this is parameters to this function new layer. So okay. basically, when you indent, it's like you give these parameters. Uh, so we want to have it like a circle and not square, and we can do this with border radius, uh, not border color radius, and uh, we can say something like thirty-five divided by two, and now it's circle. We have a circle. Okay, so uh, because border radius is the radius of the border, we can use actually 35 and it will work as well. And so when we uh, make this layer bigger, we can see that the border radius is actually 35. Right. Yeah, but uh, divided by 2 is because the radius is uh, half of the diameter. Right. And just to be precise. And uh, we can we can make this we can make this layer like semi transparent and we do this by adding opacity. And opacity is like one zero point five. And now it's like semi transparent. So what if we add another circle? I'll try to copy it. And change it to circle B. Okay. 
we have another layer, but it now sits in this top left corner. We can center it as well. But now they sit on the same same position. How do we how do we move them apart? Uh, there is a nice method of doing this. Is we can use the method center x center x. You can see it in this. And if we write something like minus twenty, we see it's centered, but it's like a little bit to the left. And for the circle B, we'll do this something like this. And we'll say something like plus 20. Uh, so they're a little bit close to each other. So we'll change it to 35 maybe. So it's the same distance. Yeah. So now we have two dots, semi-transparent ones. It's, it's And uh, now I'm going to add the third circle, which will be our active one. Circle C. I'll just copy this <coughs> one. And circle C. It's in the left corner, but this one will be white. I will not give the opacity. 0.5 to this to him and now it's just the white dot. That's I okay. So, so you mean like the center of superior or something like that of the group? No, I'm just thinking about like organization of the code. Like Formatting. Yeah, for, I mean for organization it's better to create one super layer and then add some pages inside and then center it as super layer. In this case, you have... Yeah, I'm just... Uh, I, I want to go the oh, okay. easy way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, not the easy way, uh, but like, I don't want to create super layers, like, I just want to... to like try to work with just these two layers, and uh, I want to center this one as well. Oh, now we have this uh, three layers: one active, one inactive. Uh, and uh, now I want this layer to change its position based on which page we are on. So in order to do this, I use events. Uh, so I can basically track the position of our page. So I do something like... Uh, To read more about events, we can go to documents and. Uh, so is it a or comma to change shots? Yeah. So that's how you okay. invoke a function, and we can. I mean, write a dash and then print it down. Uh, so you write the dash and then you write break that. No shortcut. No shortcut. Right? Yeah. Can you not add it to frame the shortcut? I feel like I've seen someone doing it really more. I don't know. I think it's but not it really practical. Changes, yeah. So we can see how it's changing. So 
So now we have in this a nice console the change in values of hex of page content. So on that string that you put on the content on the change x. Yeah. So basically changing is just yeah, capturing you, all the, the values yes. of x. Yeah. <coughs> so it's it's invoked on every change of the x value. You can basically track change y. Uh, I think it's changed, or we can change uh, something like scale. Can we check scale? Yeah, it's it's not invoked right now. Right. Scale is not changed, but if if it's changing, you can basically have something that listens to this change and do something with it. Okay. You can see that on the top. Yeah, you you can you can you you can check it. Yeah, cool. Uh, because like it's really not that easy to uh, to select the console, like JavaScript console in this one, and that's why the print is really nice mm. way of checking some variables. Is there other attributes that I can use instead of change? What? Yeah, you, you, you just uh, read the documentation, you, you see events, and yeah. you see what you can... Uh, okay. There's change x, change y, change point, change width, cool. change height, change size. You can track basically anything. Uh, but you can do this different way. You can do more like for clicking. <coughs> you listen for event click. Yeah, but I'll go to this later. Yeah. yeah, so let's just try to see if we can... Uh, yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this. Yeah. So now we just try to move this active dot between these two positions while our pages are moving. When is your dot surface one? Uh, it's just it's here. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's it's just above. Uh, that's it's just happening because it's 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 staying just above the first one. So it will move between these two positions. Okay. So instead of printing just page content text, I want to change the, the position of our circle. Circle C X is in framers there is nice utility which is modulate. Uh, you can read it a bit in docs, I'll just try to type it. What modulate does is changing the value uh, between some two positions uh, based on what value we give it as an input. So the input would be this page content text. This is the input. And then we'll write two arrays of values. Uh, we can basically try to see. So right now, the page content uh, x is zero, and when we swipe it here, uh, we see that its x is minus screen width, basically. So we'll try to add zero and uh, minus screen width here. And we'll try to add something like minus 35 plus 35. Let's see how it's working. Uh, it's working, but not the way we want it to work, right? You see that it's, it's not moving here. I can explain. I will be. Yeah, so basically, uh, when uh, the. the X value of our page changes from 0 to 100, for example. This value changes from minus 35 to plus 35. So when it's 0, it's minus 35. When it's 100, it's plus 35. So it checks the value of our page and checks it, what the position it has. And depending on the position in this range from zero to screen width, the it changes its value from minus thirty-five to plus thirty-five. 
but it's not what we want basically. Yeah, we want to change a screen or page bits divided by two minus thirty five. Uh, I want to do it like this so it's easy to check page bits divided by two plus thirty five. Let's see how it's working now. Can you see it? Is it working? It's a little bit of the century. Can you turn this bit into a sentence? So we want circle C, which is the. Yeah, basically, yeah, I can. One. Yeah, so I'm, I'm tracking this value, page content X. It changes when I'm scrolling the page, basically. And then I'm seeing the range of it. So it's changing from zero to minus screen width. And I give the circle, circle C X value. So it's changing between this center of the screen minus 35 to center of the screen plus 35. So it goes from this value to this value. It's, it's a little bit uh, off because uh, when we place this, when we center, it's basically tracking the width of this uh, circle. And we need to do this as well, something like 35 divided by 2. Is there a way to say center line based off you know, the left of the circle or the right of the circle, or do you have to be doing this off the center of the circle? Uh, I don't know. We can have the variable of center, which would be like page bits divided by two. It would be easier. So, for example, I do it like this. Uh, center x is uh, page bits so divided by two. There is an easy way to do it. We can just talk to the x position of the two dots. So here we can have like circle A X move to circle A circle B X without any you know page width or plus blah blah blah. So we know yeah, yeah we, we can do this position. Yeah I think it's dots. a easy way to do it. we can do it like this. So we can go from circle A X <coughs> to circle B X. And um Let's Regarding see. the modulator, I can talk a little more. If yeah, you should, should go in, in more detail about this. Yeah, I'll just. It's a modulator. You, you only use the binary value. Actually. So yeah, yeah. yeah, you just like change kind of range, range one. You, you like map the range one to range two. Yeah. yeah so there are two two thing. ranges and two variables. And what you are doing, so you have the range of one variable and the range of second variable, and you are changing the. Uh, the, uh, their second variable within its own range when you're so you know, two of them, right? So one and seven. So, for example, you want this to move. Huh? Okay. So, for example, this is zero, this is 100, right? So you are moving this object like this. This is your first range, first object. And you want this object to move, for example, from 30 to 70. So it's like, you know, so when this on zero, this on 30. When this is on 100, this is on 70. You understand what I'm talking about? So there's just, just to play back to the if I understood. Essentially, the first thing we are doing is that we map this segment, which is from zero to the, to the screen, right? Yes. Yes. And then we said, Okay, calculate the kind of speed. Yeah, you, you know, and then you say, well, it's not the speed. Second. It's not the speed. So you, you are like breaking up these two, mm -hmm. for example, 100. And so in this case, 
for example, half of, of this big oh, interval will know. be 50 and half of this interval ah, will be like 35. Mm -hmm. But mind that we are using this modulate not only for like X position. We can, for example, change the border radius of object, we can scale, we can blur, we can do anything we want. We can even change, I don't know, maybe not the color, but any, any, any other properties that has like numeric value. It's really any right. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so we have. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hear your explanation. Well, well, my understanding is really like, uh, okay, first thing we tell what is uh, the thing that we need to operate, so it's the segment, and then we say, yeah. okay, apply the same transformation instead of this yeah. segment to this smaller segment, which is defined by yeah. the distance from this first dot and the second dot, right? Yeah, for the and second So, whatever dot. happens within this dimension also happens. Yeah. So if you drive exactly. halfway through the, 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 the width of the screen, that would be the equivalent of halfway through Yeah, the so course. actually if you will drag the, the page and just hold it like... Uh, yeah. As you can see, it you see, you see we are on the half, we are on the half right now. And, and the dot is the same way, so it's on the half of its movement. Jig, jig. So it, it's um, three. It's really nice feature to do, uh, you know, all sorts of interaction. So it's it's one of the things that uh, that are not present in you know regular prototyping tool where you just you know yeah. on on click or on drag. Yeah. 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 So you basically can do this, but you need to check something like uh, change current page because you can track it in page control. So when the page changes, you can evoke something and then change the position of the stars. So, with, with the framework, there is no right way to do it. Yeah, you, so can you can do it like this, you can do it like that, and sometimes, because you are experimenting, you're discovering something new. So, if you will, so there are certain rules of the language, but there are no certain rules for the code you are trying. You can try this or try that. So, we'll talk more about states, for example. We can have this white dot in two states, and when we are changing the page, we can switch the state. Basically, so that's how I'm going to the, the next. So, um, why is there a, um, <laughs> why is there a um, square bracket within the round bracket? Uh, square bracket, bracket. bracket is basically is the way you uh, do the arrays in JavaScript or PostScript. It's basically like the pair of values, or you can basically uh, pair of values in one variable. Mm -hmm. So, you always use square brackets within round brackets? Uh, I mean, like, uh, if you if you see the documentation for page, uh, for, like, this modulate function, uh, you go to utilities, and then you go to modulate, and then you can see all the documentation. So, basically, you see the value, like the first one, and then there's first range of two numbers, then there's second range of two numbers, and actually, there is a limit you can use. Uh, I'm going to use it here. I'm writing the true here. So now, where I'm going off limits, the page doesn't go. Like, yeah, because like if I, if I write false here, so when I write, it goes beyond its limits, like this. You see. And now, if I write true, it doesn't go outside of the range. The second one. Doesn't go outside this two dots positions, uh, and you can read all of this in documentation. The documentation for Framer is awesome; like it's one of the best documentation is ever seen for it, like any for Python tool or like any tool whatsoever. So I think I understand what I was asking before. Because it's an array that like you can think of unlimited like right yeah. values. Yeah. Okay. I thought we. Yeah, it's not just Mobile one function. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, it's like four values basically. Like first is like inputs, uh, second value is the range for the inputs, and then the range for the outputs. Yeah, but we have twenty. Yeah, like whatever. Yeah. 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 Ye
Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add this shutter button which we have on the bottom of camera usually like right here when I press it oh no <laughs> I don't need to press it actually I need to swipe the screens it changes from like this circle to like rounded rectangle and the accent, the blue one, is changing from ring, the blue ring, to red dot in the middle. You can try it for yourself and see how it's working, like, if you want. And I will start writing some code for this. Uh, so, I will write something like shutter. It's a new layer. has a width of say 200 base of 200 the color is white it's not white <coughs> the border radius <laughs> is 100. Uh, so if you want to, to be more like scientific, we can do something like shutter size and uh, use this variable in these three places. So now if you want to change the shutter size, we just change it in one place. You can do any size you want. And uh, we'll start with this, this, this 200, but you can change it to anything. Uh, so we need to center it. And uh, I think I need to have it lower. Center Y. Something like this or even this this is our shutter button so I now want to talk about some states so basically this shutter need to have two states and we need to cycle between two states depending on the page we are on. So I will write something like shutter states add. This is the method of adding states and uh, I'll just have two states which is one of them is photo. It will have its shutter size and the state video this width uh, yeah I can yes. have a little pause yeah. and then I'll then you can so now I want to go between these two states depending on this uh, position of our page. I will write something like page on and this change current page and I will print something like current page oh, something like page And we'll see what's happening when I change. Okay, there's something wrong happening. This is because I'm not using this one. So now we see when I change the page, 
we print the current page. They have this horizontal page index. So now when I'm swapping between these two states, I'm now getting 1 and 0. First parameter of set again. So this page, horizontal page index, and I give the page current page. This is a little bit tricky, but if you check in this documentation for page component, you can see that there is a method like for detecting this page index you have. I think it would be easier if you just have this variable horizontal page index like current horizontal page index would be easier. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, so I'm thinking about making a variable, which is ID. And now I can check if ID is equal 1 and say something like print hey. Is it working now? Yeah, it's now doing something like hey. Now we can change the state of the shutter. Can we do something like shutter states change a uh, switch, not change to photo or oh, video? Okay, our shutter button is just this big button. And now I think we need to go back. And uh, we say something like else, shutter states, switch to the photo. What's happening? Oh. The size is changing. Not the position, but we'll get to this. States. Animation options. Time. Let's see. It's now changing quickly. We need to, to change the position so it stays centric. So this x page width minus shutter size divided by two. Did I break anything? No. And here I'm writing something. I can use the variable shutter video size to and now I will do something like X page width. Shutter video size divided by two. Let's see. Okay, it's now centered. Excentred. This is a new layer. So I want it to be something like, I don't know, 35. Actually, you, 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 you might want to write it on one line. This is perfectly legal way to do this in Framer and CoffeeScript. So instead of taking two lights, you can use two parameters. And uh, the color, the ground color. It's red, it's FF0000. Zero, 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 zero. It's now red. Actually, I changed my mind. Uh, so we have this 
thing and we want to animate it right here. So Accentrap animates. There is a method of animates in Framer. We can use it. And we use properties and we use scale. And for scale, we just use ID. Let's see what happens. Okay, uh, we didn't need this uh, at the very beginning. So we don't need this at the creation. So probably we'll just write scale here and it will be zero. So if we reload, we'll have it like this. And we change it back. Uh, so I think it changes a bit slowly. So I'm going to use some curves for the animation. The framer has nice way of animating these curves, like with the spring physics, and we can use one of these spring physics curves, uh, something like this. The spring 430 and 0, it operates with values of tension, friction, and velocity. Let's see how it works. If I add here something like 30, it's a bit jumpy. I can change values here and see how it's working like this. So we also had this second accent for the photo button, which is like this ring, the blue ring in the button. I will try to create it as well. Accent blue. New layer. It's something like 150. 150. Background color. So, I'll try to do border colors first. We want to have the blue one. Let's do 28 AF, okay. And uh, we want it to have circular shape. One fifty divided by two. So it's non circle. And now I want to center it. We don't see our border yet, or we see, but it's too small. We can select the border width to something like 10. Is 10 okay? I think it's a bit too much. Uh, so I'll try to add the variable accent size, which I'm using here. And I'll try to change it to see what value I want it to have, something like 170 or 160 is now better and we want it to be white oh no it's not border color, it's the ground color, I want it to be white like this but I can see my video Accent. So what I want to do, there is another notation for colors in Framer, which uses RGB values and alpha. So I can use something like 000, and so now it's fully transparent. And now I can see this red accent for the shutter button. Um, I'll try to go with states here this time. 
So for X and blue, I'll try to add states. X and blue states. Add. And uh, this will be photo states. And the scale will be 1. And there will be video states. And the scale for the state will be 0. And uh, I will change it here. Shutter, not shutter, X and blue. to video and here X and blue states switch to photo let's see it's moving but it's moving with different speed we can try to add the default animation for all the animations in this framer and uh, that's how I'm going to do this framer defaults animation okay. so now this is what I'm going to have and now I can delete this animation for shutter states because like you have the default one it's going to be easier for us 